Hey y'all, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janae, if you didn't know, and today's video is another missing persons case. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, y'all. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Little Miss Myra Lewis. And before I go into this case, I just want to let y'all know that it's some stuff that I find a little funny, and a little fishy, but I'm going to give my opinions and like what I really, really think at the end of the video so anyway let's just go ahead and get right into the story little miss myra lewis she was born on november 30th 2011 to her parents gregory and erica lewis however i have seen erica lewis's name as erica ledger so i'm not really 100 percent sure if that's because erica and gregory gregory weren't really married and they just were like common law marriage you know after you've been together for seven years in some states you are considered married or if that's just because that was her maiden name and that's just what some people were decided to use however like i said myra was born to gregory and erica on november 30th of 2011 and at the time she was born she was the fourth child no yes she was the fourth child out of five she had three older sisters and a younger brother at the time of her disappearance and the lewis's pretty much lived a simple life they lived in camden mississippi on like I don't want to call it a desolate road, but it's somewhere where I would just pretty much classify it as country as hell because I'm from the city. So anything where it's like a whole bunch of trees and houses are like half a mile apart and not like right next door where you can look outside and see your neighbor bathroom if you're really trying hard. I, um, yeah, that's the type of place they lived in where they had like a big old front yard, a nice size backyard. There were trees everywhere. It's just not too much going on. If you don't live on the road, if you don't live along that road or know somebody who lives over there, you probably are not traveling down that road too often because there's nothing there. Um, so like, yeah, that type of place. Gregory was the worker of the family and Erica, she was a stay at home mom. And to make ends meet, Gregory not only had one job, but he had multiple jobs. So he was, I don't want to say out of the house all the time, but like when you have multiple jobs, you're either sleeping or at work. And that's the kind of dynamic that they had. But anyways, life was going as usual for them. Nothing out of the ordinary until March 1st of 2014 when Myra and one of her older sisters was outside playing in the front yard and Erica had to leave to go to the store. So it was around 11.30 a.m. on March 1st, 2014 when Erica stated that she was about to go to the store and she told her two daughters to go inside so that they could be with their dad. Now, meanwhile, Gregory is inside the house taking care of the baby and the rest of the kids but Myra's not inside. But at this moment, he didn't think too much of it because when their other daughter had came inside, she said that Myra went with Erica. So he's not thinking too much of it. And this has happened before where one of the kids would go with Erica and then, you know, the rest of them would be at home with their dad. So this was nothing out of the ordinary. Gregory didn't think like nothing of it. That is until Erica came home and she didn't come home till around like 3 30 so she had been gone from 10 30 11 o'clock till now it's 3 30 in the afternoon and Myra's not with her and once Gregory sees that Myra's not with Erica he's kind of like just where's Myra and Erica was like I left her here with you and Gregory's like no you didn't the baby's not here so they kind of get into like a little tiff about like Myra's here no she's not she was with you no I left her here type of deal and then they realized like why are we arguing we need to go find our child so Gregory hops on his ATV like I told y'all they live in a rural area ATVs are not uncommon so he hops on his ATV and he searches a one mile radius I don't know why I'm whipping the dip in but he canvases a one mile radius like around their property like between the trees the grandparents house because the grandparent one of the grandparents lives not too far away and it wasn't uncommon for the kids to go over there to spend time with the grandparent but the baby wasn't there either nor was Myra in a one mile radius of their property. Gregory figures like Myra's only two years old if she walking away from here she's not going too far because her little legs is only going to take her so far. She's not about to be walking 35 miles east west north and south like that's just not going to happen so 
Um, that's why he only does a one mile radius because he's like, my baby can't go too far. She's so little. She's not, she not gonna make it too far on those two little legs. But when he doesn't find her, he goes home and they decide to call the police and let them know that Myra is missing. However, it's been about six hours because remember, Erica left at around 10 30, 11 o'clock that morning and she got back at three o'clock. It's now five or six o'clock and this is now when the police are getting involved so it's about five or six hours later and just like Gregory did the police canvass the area and you know do a search around the property however they do broaden their spectrum and they go like five they do a five mile radius um, around the property that includes all the like wooded areas that includes the grandparents house um the Lewis household I think if I'm not mistaken, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure though that they asked the neighbors who again weren't in a like super super close vicinity. They not like right next door, but it's like a little bit a little further down. And they also checked a small like creek like area. Like is it a river? I don't think it was a river. It's some type of body of water. It's not like a large body of water, but it is like a small type of body of water that they, that they checked and they did not find Myra there either. The police also had a, a dog, a scent dog, and that dog, he actually picked up Myra's scent to the front of the fence, but after that, it was just gone. And that kind of indicates that she either never went outside of the fence or someone picked her up and she left in a car because like I said the scent stopped at the fence that they had in their front yard so yeah that was the extent of police's search in that moment and they did issue an amber alert but at this point they have absolutely no leads like at all so as we know in these cases the police are going to look at the family first and the police they did do like a search of the house and everything like that but they didn't find anything they didn't find any damning evidence but they did see that the house is kind of like what they called in a con not condemned state but like the living conditions weren't the best for the children and so the children got taken away and Erica ended up actually getting arrested because there were firearms in the home and Erica was like a felon and she was on parole and she had violated her parole by being in a household where firearms were and she was on this parole was it parole was she on parole probation she had something going on with the law where she couldn't be in the vicinity of firearms or live, you know, where firearms are because she had got arrested for welfare fraud and she failed to show up to court for that. So I think she had a warrant out for her arrest. It was something with the law, y'all. But she did end up getting arrested because of those firearms that were in the house. But that's not uncommon for people in the South. A lot of people in the South own firearms and those were actually Gregory's firearms and according to Gregory he was I don't want to say avid but he had guns he was a shooter because his dad used to take him hunting and stuff like that when he was a young boy and that you know that kind of just followed him into his adult life but unfortunately um, for Erica the police decided to still take her in which I mean, that's kind of fucked up because I'm out here looking for my baby and y'all trying to take me to jail. Like y'all couldn't wait till after we find her or something. Like, is this really necessary right now? But in any event, they arrested her and she ended up getting out 79 days later. So this whole time, like for 79 days, she's in jail. And I can only imagine where her mind was going. Like, where's my baby? What's going on? Where's the investigation? Like, I just don't think the police had to arrest her for that right then and there it's like come on now come on now just take the firearm from them and let them continue to search for their child maybe i don't know so after erica gets released from from jail she is back right on the search she is doing interviews with the police with, with the local media just saying that she wants her baby back she just she, she doesn't know nothing she don't know where she could be She's just pretty much pleading with them, whoever has her baby, to return her. 
Yes? Um, you know, when is anybody going to cook? I'm going to cook when I finish filming. <laughs> The disrespect. The police are still continuing their search. And at some point, they actually get a tip that Myra was spotted in a motel room in Memphis. So the police follow up on this tip. They go to the hotel room. But unfortunately, they say that the young lady who was in the room was not Myra. So Myra is still missing. And the police are no further in their investigation. Like they still have no leads. They still have no suspects. Because at this point, I believe they had cleared the parents of any wrongdoing. So as time goes on and the investigation keeps moving forward, the Lewises, they not really, I don't want to say they're not cooperating with police, but they not, they not really putting their faith in police. They they don't really want to fool with the police. However, they do do a couple of interviews. And in August of 2014, they did an interview and it, it was at a, a park. And during this interview, the, the interviewer is asking things about, you know, how Myra was. And they were saying that Myra isn't like the friendly type of kid where if she sees somebody she's gonna run up to them and like be all hunky dory and like hey da -da. you know I mean as much as a two-year-old can speak but you know she's not one of those two-year-olds she's very cautious and weary however if somebody may have offered her something she could have potentially gone with them and they're basically talking about the details of the case like what happened again basically the story that i just told you erica went to the store they thought she, she thought she left the baby with gregory gregory thought the baby went with her da, 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 da. and that's basically the extent of the interview and then again in i think it was october of 2014 they did an interview with um a youtube channel called good twin bad twin and this interview it was terrible it was bad it was a bad interview i didn't like this interview i did not like this interview at all and this is the point where i'm going to transition from facts to my opinion okay this is the interview where i started to feel like the parents knew something more than what they were saying and then as I did more research I really felt like they did know more than what they were saying because in this interview this interview seemed very self-serving to me this interview seemed was first of all it was a boring boring as heck the interviewers kept talking about absolutely nothing they was talking about like just the fact that Erica and Gregory had been together for um, upwards of 12 years and that this isn't the typical baby mama, baby daddy situation, that had nothing to do with it. Like a lot of this interview was not about Myra at all. And I'm a linky here. I don't know if y'all really want to go watch it because that shit was boring as hell. But this is the interview where I felt like Y'all know more than y'all Y'all saying y'all know that daddy wasn't giving eye contact. They were smiling. Like, I'm talking about my missing baby. Why is I'm, smi why is I'm smiling for? I'm going to calm down. And I'm going to finish telling y'all about the rest of the reasons why I feel like they knew more than what they said they was. They knew. Also, I feel this way because in the aforementioned interview, the one where they was at the park, they had all of their kids with them. And it just seemed like very woe is me again dad not giving too much eye contact mom and and she cried erica she cried a couple times during the video where i couldn't really tell if it was genuine cries or like because at the end of the day she really could still feel bad about her baby me being missing but at some points in the interview she just looked like why are we here like i don't even want to be doing this and that could be because she really just didn't want to be doing this, not because she she knows more than what she's saying, but it could be just because like, I'm tired of this. I'm just, where's my child? Like, I don't want to do this. 
but it just seemed very self-serving again to me and then further along like i said they weren't really cooperating with the police and i can understand that to a certain extent because the police in some cases treat victims of crimes especially black victims like they are the criminal and i can understand them not wanting to interact with the police on on a certain level however if my baby go missing, I'm calling y'all every day. I'm, I'm, y'all not getting rid of me. Y'all might as well call us Siamese twins at this point because I'm on y'all ass until y'all find my baby or give me some type of answers. I'm just saying. It's like, even if I don't really fool with the police like that, I'm on y'all. You know what I mean? So that kind of was like a little bit of a red flag to me. And then the fact that the Lewis's have fallen off of the face of the earth. The Lewises have moved away from their home in Camden, Mississippi. However, they didn't leave a co any contact information like a phone number. They didn't leave a forwarding address. They left absolutely no trace of themselves for the police to contact them if, if they do happen to find Myra. Like, why, why didn't y'all provide any information for the police at least? Because I can understand like the public like them not wanting to be public right y'all already a lot of people feel like i feel like they know more than what they're saying they know so the public attacks the uh just just all the public scrutiny i can understand them not wanting to be in the public eye like that however i'm giving my information to the police because y'all gonna need to call me if y'all have any developments in the case anyways so yeah that's just those are you know that's just my thoughts but there are also some other theories behind you know this case and one of those theories is that because she was you know in a place that is rural that has a lot of trees surrounding some animals may have gotten to her in some way shape or form being that she was outside by herself she's small you know like two-year-olds they're not that big and two predators and like big birds they could seem like prey so i mean that's also a theory that's been floating out there but again nobody really really knows because there has been nobody charged in this case there's been no suspects named and it's been eight years at this point and police are no further in this investigation than they were on day one like they literally have absolutely nothing and that's the saddest part is that even if they were to find something, who are they going to tell? I mean, they're going to tell the public, but I feel like the family should be the first to know. And they can't contact the family, which, which by the way, I find is a little bit weird because y'all the FBI now. So how y'all can't, how y'all can't find, <laughs> how y'all can't find them? Y'all be finding little Petey who be on the corner slaying a crack, but y'all can't find this family, but that's just me and then also my sister said something to me when i was telling her about this case and and it made a little bit of sense to me like since the family just dropped off the face of the earth are were they involved in some stuff and now we need to be looking for them as well as far as like potential victims of some type of crime i hope that's not the case but i mean you just never know like stuff be crazy out here in these streets so you just really never know and i hope that's not the case not the case like i said but the police can't find them so i don't know so yeah little myra was last seen wearing a turquoise shirt with a bear on it some white or khaki pants and some pink shoes and like i said she was last seen in her front yard on mount pilgrims road in camden mississippi with her older sister if anybody has any information on the disappearance of Myra Lewis, please come forward. There is a $20,000, I believe, reward for uh, anything that leads to her. There are a couple age progression photos. Here is one from when she would be eight years old. And then here's another one from when she would be 10 years old. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. That is all that the police know, which is pretty much nothing at this point. If you have any information, please contact your local authorities or please contact this number right here. And yeah, I will see you all in the next one.